Hello, everybody. It is Patrick here with uh, Trustees Vintage Live Sale coming in again Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern. Thanks so much for all of you who've already signed on early. Trying to pop on early when I can so that I can get some of my hellos in uh, so we don't delay the launch of the sale. If you've been looking at the chat, you will recognize that the Huckster Helper is back in the house. Uh, my daughter Amelia is back uh, in town and she is available to help with the sale. So she's actually here with me and uh, she will be doing the, um, she'll be watching the first people to claim. Uh, hopefully Nate will still be able to join us, but I did tell him he did have the night off and made sure that uh, my daughter will be responsible for all of the multiples. Uh, so that gives, uh, so Nate won't have to deal with them when he comes back. Cause I'm sure he'll be helping me again next week. So uh, again, thanks for everyone for joining us in. We got Jay Goodwin coming in. She was one of the first ones to join. And Katie has come back in from Vintage and Vinyl. Hope she's feeling better. Uh, I know she's getting her videos out again. So that's always a good sign that Katie must be doing, that she's doing better. Um, we've got Stephanie coming in from Thrifting Adventures, representing the West Coast. Thanks so much, Stephanie, for joining us. And uh, we got our we got our first Canuck in the house. We've got Julie from AJ's Retro and Vintage. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us, Julie. We got Judy coming in. Hey, Judy. Oh, we do got Nate in the house. So Nate is the uh, yeah we, Amelia. You know she is my daughter, so she kind of gets a little bit of pro, uh, press, um, higher priority. But uh, we love you, Nate, and we'll definitely be using you again. We have the great state of Maine being represented for, by Rebecca. So thanks, Rebecca, for joining us. Helen Booty's back in. Patricia Robinson has come back, so thanks so much for joining us again. Uh, Patricia, Karen is uh, is back. We've got the uh, first Terp in the house. We've got Dawn from the great state of Maryland, uh, the Old Line State. Friend, she's the head of Just One More Docks and Rescue. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us, Dawn. Uh, Vicky's in the house. Thanks so much for joining us, Victoria H., and yep, the if you never use Streamlight, it jumps a lot. We got our, our first New Yorker in. Let's see, what's the New York State Empire State, right? So uh, Amelia will be a member of the Empire State soon enough. But uh, for now, we've got Steve representing uh, Brickyard Brickhouse Salvage and Antiques uh, in the great state of New York. Uh, Deanna Dill is coming back to us. Thanks so much for joining us, Deanna. And uh, Chad, another Terp, another, uh, somebody else from Westminster, Maryland. Thanks so much, Chad, for joining in. Uh, if anyone's in the Westminster area, make sure you stop by his uh, booth at uh, the Antique Shop, Vintage Shop in Westminster. Uh, Kim Zapp coming in from Buckeye State. Thanks for joining us, Kim. Simon says, let's make a deal. She's maybe Pennsylvania. Trying to remember where I shipped that box to. Uh, we got another, we definitely have the Keystone State represented. We got Melody coming in uh, from Pennsylvania. And another Canuck, we got Tia Fain also coming in from Canada. So there's so much to have uh, in the in the house. Uh, let's see, we said hi. To, uh, oh, we got Grace, uh, Dana from Grace 2010H. So thanks for joining us, uh, Grace, uh, Dana. Diane Broderick's coming back in. Uh, we got Michigan represented. We got Sandy Four from Four Sandy's Lilacs coming in. Texas in the house. Carrie coming in from Austin. So thanks so much for joining us. Susan, uh, thanks for joining in. I think you were the first person I've ever shipped to Mississippi. So uh, thanks for joining us. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy uh, the sale again tonight. And I could not remember where Jay Goodwin is from. So that was from North Carolina. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Diane Broderick, the natural state. Well, unless you're naked, I have no idea what the natural state is. So we'll see where that where that takes us. Uh, another Texan, got Tip, uh, Christy from Tippy Wings Vintage coming in. Linda Punky's come back in the house. South, Southern Buckeye, who's not from Ohio, but is somewhere from in the Carolinas. Um, yeah, see, I, you know, I just messed it up. You're somewhere in the Carolinas. I want to see your North Carolina, but I can't swear to that. So, uh, but thank you for joining us again, Southern Buckeye. And let's see, uh, we've got another West Coaster. We've got Trisha from Sandy and Otto coming in. Trisha's a great one uh, to follow if you don't already. She already does some, also does some great live sales, but she is another one who uh, makes sure that the calendar is kept up to date and puts out actually a YouTube version of the calendar. Uh, so if you're not an Instagrammer, if you can't follow people on Facebook, uh, she's an easy one to follow that you can watch her YouTube video and reference that to know who is uh, doing live sales throughout the week. Uh, uh, Stephanie does hers on Tuesdays. Uh, she's jumped around a couple of times because she's been doing a lot of partner sales, but her normal date is on Tuesdays. So just, you know, got to wait almost an entire week before she rolls around again, but definitely you want to join uh, Stephanie. Um, 
we got uh, Shelly was also from Pennsylvania. Cindy J is coming back in. So hi, Cindy. And uh, we've got Lockport, New York. Okay, so near Niagara Falls. All right, well, Leona, thanks so much for joining us. I think you might be new. So thanks for coming in. If you don't follow uh, Dee from Thrill of the Thrift, I think she's actually in uh, the Niagara Falls area. So you could buy from her and she, you could like maybe not even have to pay for shipping. Um, but I think Steve from uh, Brick House is, for, I think he's on the southern part, like southwestern part of the state. So I don't think he's all that close. Uh, I think I said hi to Judy. Oh, we got another Marylander. We got Vinny coming in. So he's representing Western Maryland. So thanks for joining in. We got another California, another West Coaster, Maria, California Thrifter. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, Cricket Harrington, thanks so much. I think you might be the first time coming in. So thanks so much for joining the sale. Sue Golombesi, come back. So hi, Sue. Uh, thanks for coming in. Okay, Diane, Arkansas. I, I, I know I've shipped to you, but that's I, that one slipped in my mind. So I apologize. So yes, we've got the... Uh, Razorbacks. Are you the Razorback state? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're something else. You are the Razorbacks, but I have a feeling that's not the name of your state. So uh, let's see. And to make sure I say, try to catch where those I can before it jumps again. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Diane Carter was Kentucky. So, okay. Ooh, Kentucky, Kentucky, Kentucky. I've got family from Kentucky, but I have no idea what Kentucky is. The old bluegrass state? No, the Tennessee bluegrass. I don't remember. All right, so welcome for, from Kentucky. Um, my family was in uh, Wycliffe, Kentucky, so far, far, far west Kentucky. Uh, Brian coming in for the Chicago suburbs. Huck has uh, gone back to his normal uh, resting spot on the half wall on the way upstairs. Uh, he, I did not haul him over to loom over my shoulders again. Um, but for those of you who have not been following Angela Marksberry, I don't know if she's in here tonight. Uh, she is doing some merch uh, for all of the vintage resellers that have uh, pets that make appearances on their shows. And Huck made the t-shirt. So I haven't gotten mine. I ordered a tote bag. I haven't gotten it yet. So I'll definitely show it off when I when it comes in because Huck is very happy to be included with all of the other great uh, pets uh, that are part of the vintage community. Uh, let's see, Barb Lee coming in from, so I don't remember where Barb really is from, but thanks for joining us, Barb. Eclectic Thrifters coming in. Uh, let's see, oh, there's Angela Marksberry. Yep, she's here. Uh, Helen Casey. All right. I think we got caught up. Most of the say, uh, most of the names, I'm pretty sure most of the names that I've said, there were a couple of new ones. Uh, so just as a really, really quick overview, if you're new to my channel, mine works pretty much the way most of the other live sales work in the vintage community. Uh, biggest difference you need to keep in mind is I do not do auctions. So when I show you an item, I will tell you the price. That is the price you will pay. So I'll give you, show you the item, give you the price, and then I will reveal the item number. You need to, if you didn't, if you don't know where I was saying all the hellos to, so when I brought up hello to Mary A, Mary R, or another Kentuckian, the Fat Bird Finds are joining in. Um, if you are not seeing these comments yourself, you are not, you're in the comment section, you need to be in the chat. When you're in the chat, switch over, there should be little some dots or little some bars, you click on those, change the live chat. You want to be watching that. And when I give you an item number, that is where you will type that number. If you are the first person that the Huckster Helper sees uh, come through the chat, sometimes what we see is a little bit different than what you see. Uh, if she's uh, the first person that she sees, that is the person that will be claiming that item. As simple as that. If you've never bought from me before, you will need to send me an email at this email address on the screen. Uh, because prices will not include shipping. So I will calculate shipping based on whatever you buy. One item, five items, I'll just combine them. You give you one shipping uh, cost along with your items. You pay that invoice, I ship you the items. Very simple. Uh, but again, just make sure you are in the chat, not the comments, because that happened again last week where people were trying to bid in the comments. So, um, you know, I'm thrilled when we got new people coming in and I've got a bunch of moderators that are in the house that can help answer any questions because for those of you who are used to my channel, I tend to just focus on selling and I don't follow the chat all that much. Uh, if I'm missing something, the Huckster Helper will throw something at me and make me read it, but you know, that I can't count on that all the time. So, um, Oh, and Halem's back in. So Melody's here. Halem's across the across the across the room. Um, so just make sure you're putting that in. Uh, please make sure you send me an email. Even though I can see your comments and I know who you are when you're making the comment, it's not from my end. I can't click on it. I can't 
you know, I don't know who you are, where, where your email address, I don't know anything else. You have to send an email to me. If you've bought from me before, I don't mind if you send me an email to just remind me, but I am keeping track of what you're buying. It's less, it's less important. I know that the item numbers and prices and all that kind of stuff because there are all the prices are preset. So it's, it's relatively simple. Um, but if you've never bought from me, I don't know who you are and I need to find out where to ship it. So just remember to do that. Uh, so all of my items I do a traditional, Hey, Christy, um, all of my items I do is traditional first to claim, including my mystery box. But since I know that Fat Bird finds it in the house, I always, uh, whether they're here or not, I always give them credit. They have completely popularized uh, Sue. Yes, you got that in two shipments. You should have gotten two. Um, you should have gotten two confirmation numbers, Sue. Uh, the big piece was I didn't have a box big enough or it was going to actually I did, but it was going to be really, really expensive. So when I split it into two packages, it was a lot cheaper. So yes, your, the pitcher got shipped in its own and then everything else was shipped in a separate box. So it looks like the big one, it was a 12 by 12 by 12. Um, if you don't have the confirmation or the uh, tracking number on that, um, drop me an email during or after this, after this show, and I will look it up. Um, but you would have gotten two separate emails from me each with a tracking number. So maybe you thought it was a duplicate. There was actually two, um, because one of your boxes was 12 by 12 by eight and the other one was 12 by 12 by eight, uh, by 12. So you do have two shipments on the way. Sorry. The other one didn't get there yet. They were both shipped on the same day. So that's kind of weird. Um, but anyway, uh, Pat Doodles. Hey, Pat. Uh, oh, Pam's here. Kiwi Collectibles. Um, want to follow? Fo Pam's always does some great videos on her YouTube channel. So you also want to make sure you're following her as well. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to say hello to the ones I missed. So, okay. So we're going to get things started. So I always do the first to claim. Uh, but I also, uh, when I do the mystery boxes, which were popularized by Fat Bird Finds, uh, they've made a, a lot of channels are doing them now. They are the most popular thing I typically offer. And so as a result, I've changed a little bit of the way that I offer them because I want to make it maybe a little bit more fun. Um, I do feel if you refresh your screen often enough, you have just as an equal chance as anybody else, regardless of your internet speed. Uh, but this time it's going to kind of mitigate that by the fact that I will still be doing a number to claim uh, the mystery box. All of my mystery boxes are $15. Uh, if you've never been here before, you haven't gotten one before, they typically have between $25 and $30 worth of stuff in it. Sometimes they're even still tagged from when I had them in my booth. Uh, so you're, you're getting a, a, you're definitely getting a discount because it's just kind of fun. You know, I've, it's just gonna be a mixed bag. Uh, so it's multiple items that add up be, to between around 25, 30 bucks. There is still a number here, but I'm not going to reveal it because what you need to do, oh, and I'm holding one of the items. If you're also new to my channel, you will not understand why I'm holding a maxi pad, but every Mac, every mystery box at this point is getting at least one maxi pad. So, you know, there's your temptation to get a mystery box. Um, the number falls within a range. I'm going to tell you that range. You can then start entering numbers that fall between that range and you can enter more than one number. Just hit a number, hit enter, hit another number, hit enter. Huckster Helper knows the number. I know the number. We will be watching the chat. The first person we see type the number in. So again, just keep typing numbers. But the first person we see that types the correct number is the person who will then claim the mystery box. It's the only item that I do this way, and I do them right out of the gate. So, so the early birds that came here right at the beginning, hey, you get a, you get a chance uh, to get my mystery box. So this week's mystery box, the number falls between the number number 20 to 30. So the number falls between 20 and 30. So just start entering numbers. And yes, you too can get a maxi pad. If you want me to autograph it, I will. Um, so there is a very weird story that goes with this. So all of you new people are wondering that I've gone insane. Um, I'm not, there's just a story. Okay, so I just saw the number. So I will let uh, the Huckster Helper Claire determine and refresh to make sure who's the first one. Susan Wakey. So number goes to one of my newest buyers. She joined us for the first time last week. Number 23 was the number and the person that gets it is Susan Wakey. And if you could actually enter how you say your last name, do I hate when I slaughter names? So if it sounds rhymes with something, um, congratulations, Susan. Uh, but Susan Wakey is the first one to come in. And so she will get, get the mystery box. Um, 
and uh, we'll ship that to you. And I've been also, I can't remember, Susan, where you're based, but I'll also try and take into consideration. I no longer pre-make the boxes because sometimes they're too heavy to ship if they are going to California or something. So um, if you're closer, you'll tend to get a heavier box. I'll still keep the shipping around 10 bucks. Um, but if you're farther away, <laughs> you'll get a lot of light stuff. It'll still be worth the same amount, but it just, you'll find, you'll, you'll get humored about all the lightness of what's in the box. Um, so I considered holding this, speaking of lightness, I considered holding this for a mystery box, but it's a little large. And I was afraid that if I tried to incorporate it with something else, it could get damaged because the next item is a carved or a hollowed out and decorated gourd. It's extremely lightweight. It is definitely light enough to go first class mail. Uh, probably like we're literally saying this is probably like three ounces. Like this is nothing. The box will probably weigh more than this when it goes into it. So it is just a uh, hollowed out gourd. It's got kind of a little rough uh, cut to the top. They did paint the inside and the outside has kind of a cool uh, gold uh, decoration and kind of like a wave, almost like a galactic wave thing going around the outside. It is a fairly decent sized opening, so you could you know put stuff in here, but to grab it back out, it's a little small. So you know I think it's it would be if you put another pot in here, it'd make for a great uh, container to hold a, a plant. Or if you had one of those really big air plants, those really big spiky ones, if you balance that right in the top, this would just look awesome. So it's like, it almost has like a wood grain finish, but they painted the entire thing. Like, so there's these reds, there's gold, there's kind of these browns, um, absolutely gorgeous. Yes, there you go, TFA, and we gotta love the puns. It is gorgeous. So thank you for saying that. Um, so this is available. Uh, let me know if I'm buffering too much. And thank you, Susan Way. So I, I will try to remember that. Let me know if I'm buffering too much. Um, I've been having problems with internet uh, pretty much all week. Um, so if I need, to, I don't, there's not a lot I can do, but I can switch from Wi-Fi to uh, Ethernet if I have to. Um, so anyway, just uh, let the let the Huckster helper know that and we can kind of adjust as we go. But the gourd is available and it is available for only six bucks. And like I said, it weighs almost nothing. So it's only gonna cost a few bucks to ship. So $6 for the gourd by giving me number 41. $6, 41 for the gourd. If you've been on my channel quite a bit, uh, you will know that you will see a lot of porcelain, porcelain, pottery, glass. So I'm gonna start out with my piece of glass. This is a amber glass. It does have some iridescence on the inside, not as much on the outside. It's the basket weave pattern. This would be you know, colloquially referred to as carnival glass, but it's not as heavily iridized as true old carnival glass. This is probably more from the 60s, 70s era um, because you can see it's amber through and through. Uh, it's still a beautiful piece. And number 41 went to Rebecca Higgins. So we've got a gourd going to Maine. So thank you, Rebecca, for picking that up. Uh, so the bowl is the basket weave pattern. Uh, I did have this in my booth. And so though, again, if anyone who's new, I used to have a booth until recently. And right now there's only a handful of things I've got left from it. Uh, this just happens to be one of them. So what I'm typically doing is in most cases, they still have the price tag on it. I was selling it for $12 in the booth, but it didn't sell. So I'm going to sell it here for seven. It's in perfect condition. There's no chips, no cracks. Uh, it's great, you know, whether you use it for chips, whether you use it for decoration, great large console bowl, or, you know, again, this would be big enough to hold your keys, you know, do, you know, put something where you could actually put stuff in. Seven bucks for the basket weave amber glass. Seven bucks by giving me number eight. Seven dollars, number eight for the basket weave amber glass iridescence bowl. All right, uh, going to some, I don't even know. I think Nate, is Wedgwood considered pottery or porcelain? Uh, I wanna say it's pottery, but it doesn't, uh, but does this really fall more into the porcelain? Does Jasperware fall into, or does Jasperware fall into its own category? But regardless, we've got our piece of Wedgwood. If you watched one of my videos, I did a video on this. It's been a couple of weeks now. Uh, did a um, haul video, shopping video at the flea market. And 
the um, one of the booths at the flea market was uh, had a big selection of Wedgwood. So the amber glass went to Helen Booty. So thank you so much, Helen, for picking that up. Um, and what I did while I was at the uh, at the booth with all of the Wedgwood, I literally texted uh, Nate in New Zealand and started asking him questions about what was available and what would be the best things to purchase. And he actually had recommended I purchase three items. The other two I've already sold in previous live sales. This is the third. So this is the last piece that I'm carrying that um, is blessed by Sir Nate of New Zealand. So this is one of the Zodiac plates. It happens to be, uh, so, okay, so Nate is saying it would still be considered porcelain or fine china. So thank you. Um, the, uh, this is the uh, Taurus, so the bull from the Zodiac pattern. This happens to be a pattern that Nate already personally owns. Uh, so, you know, he likes it enough that he actually owns the pattern. But the reason we picked this one up of the pieces that were available, I was basically like taking photos and scanning what was available. We liked this one because it was signed. This one is literally signed by Lord Wedgwood himself. First name is Evelyn. So, you know, that's why he has to throw in he's Lord Wedgwood, not Lady Wedgwood, but Evelyn is a man's name. Uh, Lord Wedgwood signed this in 1981. Um, I have a couple of the pieces I've been selling and there's a lot of question about, well, how do you know how old it is? The stamps on here are very difficult to date. Some of them have dates on them. This one has, it looks like a GT or maybe a CT. We can't find anything that actually shows what those dates represent. Now this one does not have the copy or the registered copyright symbol, which was started to be added in 1974. So I would guess this is earlier than 74, but it was signed by Lord Wedgwood in 81. So and maybe somebody brought it to, I have no idea. I don't know why Lord Wedgwood would run around signing things, but anyway, it's a beautiful piece. I don't know, let's see, when would, when would who's a Taurus? What month would a Taurus, I didn't look that up. Uh, it's not October, it's Nate not July. Taurus. Nate is a Taurus, so it's May. So, you know, your birthdays are coming up. So you've got the Taurus coming up. Uh, so you've got the Taurus from the Zodiac of Wedgwood. And it's signed by Lord Wedgwood himself, and it's only eight bucks. Um, and yeah, that's the easiest way, Nate, uh, Vinny, easiest way to find a fake is when they put the E in the middle of Wedgwood. There are literally Jasperware pieces or pseudo Jasper pieces that spell Wedgwood with an E. Guess what? Those are the fakes. <laughs> so, um, oh, so Vinny was saying Taurus is April. So is it one of those like a cusp thing, like end of April into May? Because uh, everyone else is saying May. Um, so anyway, April, May, Karen Donnellinger. Oh, hey, Karen Donnellinger, another West Coaster. Hey, Sheila, sorry, I missed you too. Um, so uh, anyway, your birthdays are coming up. You need a piece of Wedgwood. You need you need your own bowl. So Wedgwood from May, signed by Lord Wedgwood himself, only eight, but $8. And you give you that by giving me number 77. $8.77 for a plate of bowl. $8.77. See, see a fane, I can do it too. Uh, let's see, end of April to mid-May is Taurus, okay. Uh, let's see. All right, next one goes, this one I actually just picked up. Uh, I can't remember where I picked this up, but I love the look of it. I've actually uh, sold a tip tray in this design before. It is a, a metal uh, container. This one's a little bit different because you can actually see this one was done in such a way that the insert, that this is kind of like almost, no, I guess that's metal too. No, it looks like that, no, it's like, I think there's a plastic cap to this. There's actually like this plastic cap that have these ridges that then the metal lid screws on. So instead of just being like a typical snap-on top, it's actually tightened because it was a tea tin. So it has the label on the bottom that shows it's from Watkins, instant spiced tea. Now it does have a zip code on it. So it's automatically past 1963. I would say, you know, this may not even be all that old because I've not seen the plastic insert, but I think that label is a little old. I mean, to me, that's kind of like an eighties, nineties label. It's like almost like typewritten uh, the way the font is done. So regardless, it's a beautiful tin. It's in fantastic condition. There is no rust. There are no, I don't even think there's really, there's no scratches into the art. It's in absolutely pristine condition, both inside and out. And it is available for six bucks. 
So $6 for the T10, $6 by giving me number 93. $6.93 for the T10. Uh, let's see. Hey, Norma Jean, another North Carolina, North Carolinian and Dana, um, from grace 2010 H gets the Wedgwood plate. So congratulations, Dana, for picking up Lord Wedgwood's work. All right. All right. Uh, next one, let's go, all right, this actually um, is relatively new, uh, or it recently picked up. Uh, this was from a video that I posted, I think actually just this past weekend. I did, I kind of put my money where my mouth was. I was in a an uh, in, antique vintage shop and I found a basically a mystery box. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna buy the mystery box. And I actually opened it on air. So you can find in the video, uh, of the affordable antiques and more of Naperville. That's the video I did it in. I actually opened up the um, I opened up the box on air, and these were in the box. They are two uh, melamine cups that are actually marked Melmac. So they're the Catalina pattern from that uh, that it actually say Melmac. And I explained this a little bit in the video that. Um, the material, the melamine material was made by multiple companies, but only one of them had the copy or the registered brand trademark for the word uh, Melmac. So if you bought your material from the company that made Melmac, you, so I'm gonna put them here. So we had no takers on the tin and the huckster helper did not realize I'm now doing this. So the tin goes behind me. So any late latecomers can be, will be able to pick up the tin if they so choose. Um, so the, uh, if you bought the raw material from Melmac, you could actually put the word Melmac on your on your product. So there was Melmac products under all kinds of brand names. And what I love about putting stuff out on Instagram and YouTube is this the great hive mind of the vintage community. I was not aware until Greg from Blue Feather Mercantile uh, chimed in that Harmony House is actually a the um, house brand from Sears. So I did a little bit of digging and it appears that Sears introduced Harmony House between 1940, so right, you know, right before the war, until the 60s. I can't remember; it was either 63 or 68 was when the Harmony House brand, like, basically disbanded it. But what, doing a little bit of digging to find that out, what I didn't know, I've had Harmony House stuff before, and the concept of Harmony House was they only produced things in four colorways. So when you bought stuff, it was like kind of like granimals for your house you would buy something in the right colorway, and then by definition, it would match. So I'm not sure where Catalina falls into. I don't know if that's the color. I'm not sure, yeah, that part I couldn't figure out. But it, the fact is these are just a really light colored cream, Melmac, Melamine material. But the fact that they were branded under Harmony House meant that you could get the rest of your kitchen kitchenware, you'd be able to get pieces that would then match it uh, you know, whether you're, you know, your, your, uh, coffee pots, your other, uh, silverware, your, um, you know, countertop stuff, your, I'm trying to think the, um, tea can canister set. That's what I was trying to think of. They'd all match. So if you have Harmony House or if you just like Melmac, you have a pair of Melmac coffee cups, uh, great condition, no chips, no cracks, no issues with them. And they're only five bucks. So the pair of Melmac cups is $5. So $5 to get the Melmac by giving me number 51. $5, 51 for the Melmac. And so um, Brooke is saying, oh, okay, yeah, I'm sure there are some guidebooks because like I said, what I wasn't aware of until I started doing the research is I thought Melmac was a like a producer. Like I thought they were the ones that made finished material. So that was the only thing that got Melmac. So then when I discovered it was actually, they were the ones that made the material. That's why you see, but you couldn't use the word Melmac unless you bought the Melmac raw material. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, just one of those history things. And yeah, I can imagine that shipment would have weighed a lot. If somebody was writing enough to make a reference book, uh, that would be a lot that they'd have to pick up. All right, uh, we've got Katie on the channel tonight. So this is, I don't pick these up very often, but it's kind of nice when I do try and find them. 
um, I can always go to Katie to make sure I know what I'm getting. So I picked up a record. And as she's educating me, uh, the records, basically the children's records were just basically made all over the place. There were all kinds of companies that just specialized in children's records. So this is one that maybe uh, there is a, is the cozy record company is the only reference is on like the very upper corner of this. I was about to say it wasn't marked at all, but there it is. Um, but then you open up the record. Unlike some of the other ones I've had, this one is not a color, but it's the traditional 45. It's got that bigger hole in the middle. It's got this cool graphic on there with the, the guy holding the balloons. But the reason I bought it was for the graphics on the little folder. So this is a double-sided record, as most records are. And it is, I like to ride on my bike. And it has the lyrics. I like to ride on my bike. It makes me feel so free. When I hold the handlebars, the world belongs to me. Alfred Lord Tennyson, you just watch out. It's taken over the world. But not to be outdone, we have Mr. Squiff and Mr. Squee. Squee. Uh, all right, so this one I thought was kind of cool. Unfortunately, I picked this up after St. Patrick's Day, but you know those to me look like leprechauns. Um, so it's songs from Children for Dora Hall album. And this one is One Morning by the Wishing Well, a tittle de wink ago, a tittle de wink ago, okay. I met a couple of pixies, you really ought to know. They chase away the gloomies when they laugh and play. A wish will get them over because they're just a wish away. Oh, and there's a chorus. Mr. Squiff, Mr. Squee, twiddle dee dee, two of the cutest pixies there could be. Merry as a melody and busy as a bee. Mr. Squiff and Mr. Squee, teetle dee dee, teetle dee dee, teetle dee dee. So I can't imagine anyone would want those lyrics playing in the background while they tried to work or clean the house. But, uh, and I can't, I, I'm 100% honest, I cannot swear that fine, I don't have, I don't have a record player. I do not see any, you know, major scratches. I do, there's not cracked. I mean, it appears to be in totally playable condition, but I can't swear to it because I don't have a record player. But I think what you're buying are the graphics. So you can either have two little girl, two little kids riding the little tandem bicycle with the dog trying to bite her leg, or the Mr. Squiff and Mr. Squee, who evidently are pixies, or because it appears Misty is in the house, Prixies, because that is what Misty's father calls them. So. Those to me do not look like Prixies. Those look like leprechauns, but you know, we can't be picky because twiddle dee dee. So you get the little album, look great in a little vignette, looks great, look great in a little child's room, you know, just hanging on the wall, even just the sleeve. Uh, cool little item, picked it up, it's only six bucks. So $6 for the little uh, double side, the little double art record, six bucks by giving me number one. $6, number one for the record. And we had no takers on the Melmac, so those will also go in the back. Oh, and I forgot to say, because we've got about a half an hour left, if you joined my sale last week, I did something different. Um, as I mentioned, I don't do auctions on this channel. You know, I just want things to fly along. Uh, not everyone likes to participate in auctions, so I just keep it, keep it simple. But I do sometimes have items that I don't really know what they're worth, and sometimes you want the market to determine that. So I did something for uh, the first time last week. Uh, if you go into the comments of this section or just go into my link tree um, and go into my eBay store, I actually have this item up for auction right now. Uh, so it went up for auction in the middle of my sale last week. It ends in 30 minutes. So there are already, um, there are already bids on it. Uh, but last time I, when I started, there weren't, a, there wasn't like a huge number. Um, so I don't know what it's going to go for, but this was posted in both Instagram and in one of my YouTube videos. It's the Lascaux, uh, cave dwelling art that is created by Seye, S-E-Y-E-I Japan, we think. Um, and that's why it's difficult because there's no markings on it. There's two possible companies that could have made it going to let, uh, going to let the market decide. So it's up on the auction right now. Go into my Linktree uh, link. If you don't know what Linktree is, linktr.ee slash thmercantile or go into the comment section of the video. You'll see the hyperlink to it. You'll be able to find that. I will be announcing the winner in half an hour and then I will announce what the next item is that's going to go for auction, which will then end next week. 
And I agree, niche lady. And I welcome, welcome, um, Danny. I didn't say hi to you earlier. Um, welcome. I do think it's gorgeous. And it was one of those cases that I just didn't know what to sell it for because there were pieces that were selling for like twenty to thirty dollars, and then there were pieces selling for one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty dollars. And it made it totally made a difference of who made it. And none of us could figure it out. I showed it to Tim. I showed it to George. Like we just, there wasn't enough. We could never find this shape. So I figured, you know what? We'll just see what happens. So there are some bids on it. Don't know where it's at at this point, but I will announce in a half an hour who got it. Uh, and if it's one of you, uh, then I will announce you on the on the air. But, uh, and then I'll announce what the next items are. Um, so, okay, it looks like we did have a change. Um, the Melmac, oh no, that was a question. So yes, the Melmac was, Number 51, I guess I didn't hold, put it up in a way uh, that you can see it. 51, $5 for the pair of Melmac cups. And my shoulders are covering it anyway. All right. Um, so number one, the kids record goes to Victoria H. So thank you, Vicky, for picking that up. Um, I'd like to be able to show that so that there's no question. Yes, that's exactly what I did. I wrote on that picture with a marker. So thanks for joining us, Hazel. Uh, so Victoria H. Um, yeah, picked it up. That's not a good either. I lost the Huckster Helper's uh, comment. Um, so anyway, though, congratulations. Okay, we just got another bid on the on the Lascaux piece. Uh, all right, next, going to go to another piece of glass because it's blocking my access to a bunch of other stuff. Um, all right, so this was one. I also picked this up uh, relatively recently. Um, I don't think I don't think I ended up doing a video on this one. You tell me, but I don't think I did. So this was one of those that was in a stack of bowls. And so it was sitting down there, but I could see this ruffled rim and I could see the white painted on there. I'm like, okay, I need to know what that is. And I pulled it out. And what it is, is a uh, signed Peter Hunt glass plate uh he did quite a few um of the horse they actually made this as dinnerware as well which i think is actually kind of scary but you know whatever um it is a uh, glass not crystal it is i'm assuming it is uh, molded or just a slump glass there's no mold seams on it but it's definitely not a it's not a blown piece uh and then it has the like a little sparkly horse so to me, this is screaming 70s, maybe 60s, because, you know, if you drop some acid, this could really make you happy. Um, so it's just a kind of over the top, perfect for, you know, those girls that had the white um, French provincial furniture in the 70s with the big canopy tester beds. This just needs to be in those rooms. So if you're trying to recreate an over the top 70s white palace, maybe with yellow accents, you've got the plate to do it. So it's Peter Hunt, which is actually a very a desirable and collectible name. I did pick this up specifically to go on Etsy, but as you know, a lot of times I'll put it out here first because it's a little bit easier. I don't have to pay Etsy fees and I wanna give you guys good deals. So I got a good deal on it. So I'm passing a good deal on to you guys. An original Peter Hunt glass ruffle rimmed heart horse plate is $18. So $18 for the sparkle horse. And you see there's a little like, it's like my little pony come to two dimensional life in a bowl. Uh, it's got little hearts all over it. So $18 by giving me number 84. $18, 84 for the Peter Hunt plate. All right, uh, I mentioned the Melmac came out of um, the mystery box that I had opened. I also got this out of the mystery box that I opened. So this, do they ever figure out which was up? I actually don't know. Um, I'm gonna say that's up because I think those leaves are supposed to go up, but I, it's, it could be anything. So what this is, is it is a Red Wing, um, it basically is Red Wing China. You know, it is, it is a piece of dinnerware. But what's cool about this one, and I noticed it the minute I pulled it out, and unfortunately, let's see if, I need to put something round on it so you can see it. Ignore the pattern, that'll come up later. Um, but you can see it's not round. It's kind of like oblong. It's the handles stick out a little bit farther on the edges than they do on the top or the bottom. So you've got this 
Red Wing, what it appears to be based on some um, Google image searching and just some stuff about Red Wing um, dinner patterns, it appears to be the bread and butter plate. So it's relatively small, but to me, the shape of the plate and that design, this is a this is a pin dish, this is a trinket dish, this is to hold your keys. You don't need this as part of a dinner pattern because it's just a cool plate and it's Red Wing. So I come across it relatively often because I'm here in the Midwest and this was made Red Wing, Minnesota. Um, but I still like this pattern. It's called Random Harvest. It has kind of, it's got the mid-century modern like designs, but it's got the colorations of getting into the 70s. It really covers a lot of ground trying to add to different designs. It's just a beige, like a beige ground in kind of a, hopefully you can see it. It's like a speckly, speckled finish and then the paintings of the random harvest. So it's like I said, it's a red wing, it's just bad bread and butter plate, but it's just kind of a cool shaped plate that I think can just sit out in, you know, whether it's in your bedroom or in your utility room to hold your keys. It's just a fun little piece and it's only five bucks. So $5 for the red wing by giving me number 74. $5 number 74 for the red wing. And I think I fell behind in announcing some pieces. So 84, the Peter Hunt original goes to uh, Danny, the niche lady. Uh, so she's another one you should be following. Uh, she actually does do auctions and she's got a really unique style for her auctions because uh, everything starts at a dollar. So she really lets the uh, audience determine the value. And I think her auctions are on Fridays. I think, it's, well, they're during the day. So that's why I usually miss them because I do have a, I have a day gig. Um, but I want to say, I want to say they're in the, they're on Fridays. So drop a note, Danny and all of you, anyone who's resellers got, if you've got a channel or a show, drop, drop a note. You, if you're not a moderator, you can't drop a link, but people can see your name. I don't care. Promote yourselves. I, this is a fun community and there's a, there's something for everybody. Um, so 74, the red wing plate goes to Nettie. Hi, hey, Nettie. Sorry. I didn't say hi to you. Thanks for joining. Um, and it looks like, um, Number 51, we had a late, last minute pickup by uh, Rebecca Higgins. So Rebecca Higgins is picking up the Melmac coffee cups. So thank you, Rebecca. I will add that to your gourd bowl um, uh, and into your shipment. Okay, well, since I kind of gave you a sneak peek, I'll go ahead and show you the Indian tree. Um, so this actually falls into the category of, you know what, I can't because it's in the middle of the candle ring. So I'm going to show the candle ring first. Wait, they're stuck. Okay, here we go. This actually was in my, this was in my booth. Um, these, I, I like these a lot. This is just one of those things that, you know, different patterns, you get like a visceral reaction. Different people react differently, different things. I love this Indian tree pattern and multiple companies make it. They make it in multiple colorways. This admittedly is not my favorite colorway. This is a lot lighter. Usually they're really bold colors and like really dark uh, browns and, and rust colors and things like that. This one's a much softer and it's, it's literally a piece. It's a part of a dinner service. So this also happens to be a bread and butter plate, but it's a traditional bread and butter plate. And it is uh, Homer Laughlin. And they are stamped. Let's show you one that has a stamp because I've got my stickers still on it from the booth. Uh, if you're familiar with Homer Laughlin um, date stamps, these were actually made in 1947. So you've got some really good age on a beautiful set of porcelain dinnerware from Homer Laughlin's The Georgian Eggshell Line uh, in the Indian Tree pattern. I was selling them in my booth for $2 a piece, then they didn't sell. I'll just say that there's many reasons why I'm no longer in the booth. And things like this frustrated me because it's kind of like, wait, you can't get these any cheaper. Like there's, and you don't have to pay for shipping when you're in the booth. So you will have to pay for shipping. So I'm knocking the prices down even more. So you get a set of full set of six. So a dinner service of six for the bread and butter plates. You don't have to use them as bread and butter plates. You don't have to use them as your formal dinner service. Again, these would be great as a backdrop to this color of a, of a vignette, an underplate for a piece of glass, something to hold your keys. It's just a cool plate. They're all in perfect condition. They are all no chips, no cracks. There's a set of six of them. You can get the entire set of six for $7. So seven bucks for the entire, for the set of six of the Georgian all made in 1947. 
So you know, you're buying some age here. Seven bucks by giving me number 36. Seven dollars, number 36 for the set of six of the bread and butter plates. And it's one of those cases that's like, I'm going to think hard and long before I start getting into, I don't want to become the next replacements. They take up a lot of space that's heavy um, to move around. I'm sure that moving all that China is what messed up my wrist the first time. So, you know, you live and learn. So I'm just at this point trying to move things out. Oh, and thank you, Katie. Um, yes, next Wednesday, Katie at Vintage and Vinyl has just started doing a new series. Uh, she's doing show and tells. Uh, she did her first uh, guest was um, Daniel from um, Tacky Is Me. So he's a new channel. So definitely follow uh, Daniel. Uh, she's doing, oh man, I'm sorry. I just saw who you were doing. Um, no, you just did somebody last night and I can't remember now who it was, but I'm next. So I'm coming up on Wednesday. So uh, definitely join. Uh, you should be following uh, Vintage and Vinyl anyway but you can follow her for Wednesday. You will see me on her channel. So the Indian tree plates goes to Sonia M. So thank you, Sonia, uh, for picking those up. I'm not sure I've sold to you before. So again, if uh, you're buying from me for the first time, just make sure you send me an email uh, to this address and we will, um, and I will invoice you accordingly. So I made allusions to this because those plates were stuck in the middle of this. I now have this piece as well. So this is another item that I just recently picked up. It was, I, I really can't remember if, I don't think I did a video on these. So I think I did a missed opportunity here, but um, they were sitting out when I was prepping for my sale. So they got grabbed, nothing is safe. Uh, so this is, there's a front to it, sort of. This is from Abbey Press and it is an advent calendar or an advent candle wreath. So you see it's got the four uh, places for the candles. This is from the children around the world um, pattern or the design. It's, I'm going to say it's resin. I, I don't know what else it would be. Um, it's not wood, you know, and it's, it's got a decent amount of weight to it. So I think it's resin. I don't think it's chalkware or plaster. Um, it still has the original label on it from um, Abbey Press. It does have a zip code on it. So it's after 1963. I want to say this style. I remember my cousins having a collection of things that looked like this, and I will use the word things. Um, and I want to say that was like 80s, maybe 90s. So, but this is yeah, this is cute, you know, as little weird creatures with very bizarre circular mouths go. This is, I like the idea. I just love international stuff and the idea of having this piece and joy and all of these children from around the world and all of their different, there's hope, all of their different, um, the dresses of the, of the different countries. It's like, it's a small world sitting on your table. So we're a little out of season, but hey, this, you can put this out whenever you want, just put four candles in it and just say you're four years old. Um, it is an advent wreath though. It is from Abbey Press and um, it's just a cool piece. It's in perfect condition, no cracks, no missing pieces. I checked all their feet to make sure nothing was like chipped off or anything. So it's a really good condition. It is a little on the heavy side. We're probably talking a couple of pounds, you know, so keep that in mind, but it's not very big. So the, the box is kind of going to be kind of flat uh, that it goes into. So um, you've got the Abbey Press Advent Wreath for 15 bucks. So $15 for the Abbey Press piece by giving me number 86. $15.86 for the Advent Wreath. Uh, number 36, I think I already announced that, yeah. Um, I think I've caught up. All right. Uh, let's see. Heavy, heavy duty, and now we're going to lighter weight. I haven't had one of these in a long time. Um, had some of them when I first moved into my booth, and they sold right away. Uh, they are the, you know, that boho, the woven trivet design. I was really excited to pick this one up because I'm like, oh, this was in great condition. All of the loops are still sewn into place. It's really, really solid. Oh my God, this is so wonderful. And then I was pricing it for the sale and I saw the corner. So there is a little bit of damage to it. Um, so you can see there's like this, this reddish brown a piece that goes all the way around that piece has fallen off just at this corner. So it still makes it functional. If you lay it on a plate on a table, you wouldn't really notice it, but it isn't in perfect condition. So I did lower the price on it. 
So you've got the boho square trivet with the floral design in the middle, and it's now $5. So $5 for a little boho trivet, and you can get that by giving me number 12. $5, number 12 for the little boho trivet. All right. Um, checking really quick. We've got 12 minutes left on the auction. And at this point, the bidding of this one, so the bidding of the uh, Lascaux. 3656. 3656. All right. So. 3656, it'll close in about 10 minutes. Um, and I'll announce the winner and then announce the next item uh, that I'll be offering. All right, uh, next piece. This is, I am running, I'm starting to run down the number of pieces that were left from my booth, uh, but these do happen to also have come from my booth. Uh, this one is a creamer and a sugar. It's of this, it's kind of a slate blue color with a brown band on it. You see the floral design is a kind of a two-tone blue with those brown accents. They are Noritake stoneware. So then it's the pleasure pattern. Okay, I'm not touching that. Um, but so we've got the pleasure pattern. It is designed on both the front and the back. And then the, the um, creamer is the same. They're in perfect condition. There's no chips, no cracks, no issues with the lid or anything like that. I picked them up because when I did some research on them, this pattern was going for some pretty decent money in replacements and also online. Um, but I hadn't done enough to really see where the creamer and sugar were, were going. So they weren't going for as much as I felt they could have gone for or was supposed to go for. So I'm really, at this point, I had them in my booth for I marked them in the booth for only 14 and then I marked them down to eight. So that's what I'm selling them for here. So it's $8 for the Noritake stoneware pieces in absolutely perfect condition. Great little accent pieces for your kitchen. Um, $8 by giving me number two. $8 number two for the creamer and sugar. And it looks like the trivet went to JW Van Minimal. So we've got, I think you might be our only um, um, badger in the house from uh, Wisconsin. So thanks uh, JW for picking those up. So num uh, number two, $8 for the creamer and the sugar. And we had no takers on the advent wreath, but I'm not gonna try and balance that behind me. <laughs> so we're just, if anyone wants it, I'll show it later. Uh, all right, going back to a piece of glass. Uh, this one is a fairly large piece, but I've gotten pretty good at doing uh, Franken boxes. And it turns out two of the um, two of the priority box size, the flat priority boxes, not flat rate, the the bigger but flatter ones. You slide them together to make a pretty decent size, so this would fit in there. It's a decent piece of you know probably leaded glass, leaded crystal uh, as a decorative plate of the Chicago skyline. This again falls into the category of something that should go onto my Etsy shop because I don't think I've got a lot of Chicago Chicagoans, um, but maybe I've got some uh, transplants that used to live in Chicago and now want a remnant of their home. They even have, it's got the Picasso sculpture. It has the uh, Art Institute lions. It's got the Marshall Fields clock. Uh, it's got Marina Towers. It's It's got uh, the Aeon Amico building, Sears Tower, because it'll always be Sears Tower. It's never going to be Willis. Um, the Wrigley Building, John Hancock Building. It's just a great representation, somewhat fantasy. fantasy. Uh, it's a, a representation of the um, Chicago skyline. And it looks like number two, the sugar and creamer went to Cricket Harrington. So thank you, Cricket, uh, for picking that up. I think you might be new to me. So um, if you've never purchased from me before, I would appreciate you. I may just make sure you send me an email so that I can um, I can figure out where I'm going to be shipping it. Um, so this one is, again, it's a fairly large size. It's, uh, I should have measured it. I want to say it's 14 inches across. 13 and a half. 
So it's 13 half inches across. So it's, again, it's a pretty decent size. It also has some pretty decent weight, but it's extremely high quality crystal. Uh, unfortunately, it's not labeled, but it's a beautiful piece. I couldn't find any examples of this specific pattern, but I've sold similar patterns of a similar weight and they all kind of go for the same because you're really buying it as a skyline piece. Um, so the skyline goes to, uh, for 20 bucks, it goes for 20 bucks and it gets, get it by giving me number 97. So $20, number 97 for the Chicago skyline piece. Uh, the next item is my first multiple item of the evening. The one Nate was quite disappointed that I was replacing him with my own child uh, to handle the sale tonight. And I said, I will make it up to him by making sure that the Huckster helper has to handle all the multiples. So I have multiple multiples tonight, and this is the first one. This one is a, a large size life magazine. I've offered these in the past, uh, but they tend to be more generic covers. They tend to be more, um, you know, just kind of run of the mill and they only usually only go for a few bucks a piece. Uh, this one's the Beatles. Uh, so this is again, one that was headed to Etsy. I just never got the photographs done of it. Um, but because of the Beatles cover image, it's far more desirable. And I happen to have two of them. So you, the first two people that will claim this item uh, by putting in the number, the first two people the Huckster Helper sees, you will each get uh, the issue with the Beatles. If you want both issues, you can try for both, but you need to enter the number and then have to enter the number again and then be the first person that we, you know, that we see you for the first two people. Um, so good luck. What's if you, the date on the magazine? Oh, I'm sorry. It is dated September 13th, 1968. So it's the day in the the days in the lives of the Beatles. They call it their authentic biography. I'll open it up and show you some of the images from inside. Uh, let's see. This is of an era that some of the pictures and ads are in color, and some of them are in black and white. Um, right off the bat, you've got a lovely by uh, open piece for the, N the NFL official training table foods. That's actually the inside cover. Uh, so that one's in color. Uh, what, do house what do housewives and the NFL have in common? They serve these National Football League training table foods. Okay. Um, trying to find the section with the Beatles in it. Soup, Avon for men. Flowers on the cobblestones of Prague. Well, there's your uplifting story for the day. Uh, let's see. The view from here. Die Hard. Seagram's. Yeah, not Die Hard the movie. There's some other Die Hard. Come on, where's the table of contents? Where's the world? I should have. I should have bookmarked the deal. Here we go. Rough days in Liverpool. The big beat on the Reaper Bond. Part one of the authentic unexpurgated biography. Ooh, big words for Life Magazine. So you've got the images. That's the beginning of the article. More photographs. So these are all in color. So you've got the 1968 Beatles issue, September 13th, and it is available for $7. So the first two people we see enter the number for $7. Um, all right, thanks Nate for keeping track. Uh, evidently the Lascaux pitcher is up to 60 bucks. Um, but you can get the Beatles Life magazines for $7 by giving me number 37. $7, number 37 for the Beatles magazine. And if you joined late, hi Michelle. Uh, so we got another badger in the, in the house. Uh, if you joined late, if you go to my comment section or go to my link tree link in my eBay is currently a store uh, in my eBay store is currently an auction going on for this piece. Uh, and it is now up to $64. Um, so if the auction ends in three minutes. So if you want to get a chance, go ahead and grab that. And then I'll show another piece at after the top of the hour for the item that'll go up for the next week's sale. Uh, all right, um, I think I fell behind. So number 97, the Chicago skyline plate went to Chicago and himself, Brian Hans. So thanks, Brian, for picking that up. 
And like, let's see, I think so we had a couple people claim the magazines. So Halem and Nesting, Halem and Nicole at Nesting Haven each pick up the Beatles magazines. So heading to Pennsylvania and heading to Maine. So, and hello, Nicole, I didn't see you join in. So thanks so much uh, for joining um, and uh, congratulations. All right, this piece is also from my booth. This one, unfortunately, fall, fell under the category of an item that sold and then um, she sold in, I did a sale from my booth. And so this one sold, it was sitting at the store waiting for her to pay and she never paid. And so the store finally made me come pick it up. So it was long enough ago, I didn't bother to go figure out who the underbidder was. So I'm just offering it again uh, because that one was like an Instagram sale. So I don't even sure I'd be able to see it. So anyway, I'm bringing this one in. Hey, Linda. So I'm bringing this one in. It is a large scale pottery uh, teapot. And I do say large scale, so let me measure it. From table to top of the handle is 11 inches to the top of the teapot. The little you know, curly finial is about seven and a half. So it's a pretty decent size. It's got the, the high spout on it. It's an absolutely perfect condition. It is a pottery, it's art pottery, studio pottery. It's a beautiful piece. Once upon a time I had it for, I think originally it was 20, then I knocked it down to 15 and then I knocked it down to 10. So she bought it at 10. And because I didn't have a chance to go look for the underbidder, I didn't, I'm just gonna sell it at 10. I'm gonna sell it at the same price that I was selling it at the booth. Um, so now it's just whoever, whoever wants it. Hey, Lori, Blue Flamingo Mercantile. Didn't see you come in either. Um, so $10 for the studio pottery uh, teapot with the large bamboo handle, $10. And you can get that by giving me number 85. $10, number 85. Can you put tea in it? I would say it is fully glazed on the inside. So functionally, it should be able to hold, it will hold tea. However, I feel it's probably more of an art piece as opposed to a functional piece, but it is fully glazed. So there's nothing stopping you. It's not like it would all seep into the, uh, seep into it, but the handle is bound so when you wash it, you really you can't really submerge it because the um, you can't take the handle off. So um, just be aware of that. I said all that after bids came in, so I apologize. But all right, so that was the teapot. I do think some bids came in, and it looks like the teapot went to Tina Hendrick. H Tina Hendricks. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Tina, for picking that teapot up eBay sale is done. And the eBay sale is done. So let me see what the final damage is on the eBay. I haven't gotten the email yet. So it's gonna, I was gonna be a couple of minutes before I get the email. So I assume I'll check in a couple of minutes to make sure I've got the email. So that's that one. All right, now for something smaller. Uh, so these are um, horse brasses. I've offered these in the past. And uh, this time, these again, these were in my booth. Uh, some of the ones that I've sold on eBay uh, that have been popular for me, I've actually sold many of them on eBay, but they tended to be more specific. Like uh, I sold like a Windsor Castle one. I sold a, a Queen Victoria's uh, Jubilee. Um, they, they were commemorating something in particular. These two are simply decorative horse brasses. Um, the, the, this one's almost in the shape of a horse hoof. And then this one is really more in the shape of like a, a wagon, a wagon wheel. Um, so the two pieces here, I uh, used to have them in the booth for $12 each. I marked them down to $6 each. And I'm now going to sell them here in my live sale for a, for the pair for $9. So I'm marking them down to $4 and 50 cents each. So $9 for the pair of horse brasses great condition, but they're not marked or stamped in any commemorative or any date. Um, this one does have a slightly different image on the back because it has these little pieces here and I'm not sure what those are, what those do. Um, the other one, it's very flat on the back. So I don't know if that's something about the way they're made. I'm not knowledgeable on them, but I learned about them a little bit from Tim at over the years. 
And like I said, the, what I've discovered is that the ones that are specifically commemorative of something are doing better. So these I just said, you know what? I'll just put them at a good price and hopefully somebody will give them a good home. So $9 for the pair of horse brasses, $9 and I'll give for, by giving me number three. $9 number three for the pair of horse brasses. All right, let's see. I think somebody said that the final price was seventy one. Seventy dollars and one cent. Seventy dollars and one cent. So somebody's Victoria H. Oh, so Victoria H. You picked it up through eBay? Oh, fantastic. Um, right now, I still have, don't have the email from eBay, but that's not overly surprising. Uh, let me log into eBay and see if it says anything there. The listing's gone, but it's not telling me who won it. So it'll show up. So if I have no reason not to believe you. So Victoria H, if you're the one that got it, congratulations. Thank you so much. And I hope you give it a good home. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece and just not something I was looking to add into my collection. So, um, and so it looks like uh, Lori from Blue Flamingo Mercantile picks up the horse brasses. Um, let's see, we've got a notification. Sold, awaiting payment. And yep, sold to Victoria H. So congratulations, $70 and one cent. So thank you so much, Victoria, for picking that up. Yes, congratulations, Victoria H. So I'll go ahead and announce the next piece. Um, that, so this is this just went live four minutes ago. I scheduled it to go live when the other one ended. This was in a video that I did. Uh, this was the piece that actually Scott from the old curiosity shop actually joined the live chat when I, uh, when I first um, exhibited this because he wanted to know what it was. Unfortunately, the hive mind failed me on this one. None of us could find that mark. So, you know, a lot of people had a lot of guesses. Um, Scott from the old curiosity shop it said that it's definitely deco. Other people said it's more contemporary that's done in a deco style. I have no idea. I tried Google search. I tried, you know, I tried to Google search just the logo. Unfortunately, I never figured out uh, what it was. So again, that became a perfect example for putting up for an auction. So just same place where I was doing the auction for the Lascaux uh, picture. It, this is now up for auction. It's the only auction I offer. I only have like a dozen things on the on my eBay site anyway, um, but this is the only auction. And this will then also end uh, in one week. It'll end at the same time next week. And I will again announce the winner. So again, congratulations to Victoria H for picking up the cave painting uh, picture. Absolutely fantastic piece of redware. I, you know, I can't wait. If you, if you display it in your home, post a picture or something, we'd love to be able to see it. Uh, so that one's sold and now this one's up next. So watch the sale, it's live now, uh, but it'll close uh, at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Eastern next week. Uh, so in exactly one week. And that is the piece that is up for sale now. All right, um, another item coming out of the booth. This one is doing a little bundle um, because one of the things I've mentioned this in the past, one of the things I did at the Christmas season was I uh, did a little bit of wholesaling, which was becoming more and more the trend at the place I had a booth. And it's one of the reasons I'm no longer there. Uh, there were just fewer and fewer of us that were doing true vintage. Um, so for gift giving, I actually went out and I found a source of actual tea. So loose tea. So this is from Simpson and Vale. I believe they're based in Connecticut. Yeah, Brookfield, Connecticut. Um, they had a literary line of tea. And so this one is a black tea blend from Edith. It's Edith Wharton's black tea blend blend. There seems to be no rhyme or reason who got what blend. Multiple people had black tea. This one is a Darjeeling black tea with organic ginger pieces, mallow blossoms, marigold petals, and flavoring. But it doesn't say what kind of flavoring. So our Edith Wharton blend consists of a refining Darjeeling black tea combined with a little passion fruit and citrus flavors and a dash of spice to create a taste that is smooth and elegant. Perfect for an afternoon tete-a-tete. So I'm not only including a can of the tea, which when it was in my booth retailed for $9, but I'm including a little teapot. 
So this one is, let get the card out of it. This one is a little Wade teapot. It's the from the English Life Teapots, designed by Barry Smith and Barbara Watton Wooten for Wade, England. So you've got a little phrase on it that says a conservatory teapot. It says that on both sides. And you basically have like a little octagonal gazebo or conservatory with so slightly different designs. So on this one, it's all floral. And then on the other side with that door, you actually have a couple having a little tete-a-tete, -tete, um, you know, in the, in the conservatory. So it is a conservatory teapot. It's in perfect condition. It's a little um, canopy style lid. Like the whole thing just looks like a gazebo. And the lid is also painted to look like the glass of the gazebo. I originally had it in my booth for 10 bucks and I marked it down to five. And like I said, I originally had the T for $9. So I marked that down again. So the two pieces were originally uh, would have been $15, marked them uh, down to 12, a total of 12. So $5 and then $7 for the T. So $12 for the pair, the T and the teapot, 12 bucks by giving me number 28. $12, number 28 um, for the teapot and the T. All right, uh, the next piece, this is a case, if you follow me on Instagram, you will sometimes see things posted on Instagram that I'm going to be offering in the sale. And this is one that um, my intention is, I'll try and, I'll also try, always try and post the ones I find interesting, but I'll also post ones that I feel like maybe you wanna do a little bit of research before you join the sale, because they might be a little bit special. And this is one that even in the, um, in the chat, Melody, who happens to be in here tonight, uh, Melody did some research and she shared it because this is a design that is signed V Pinto and then Vietri. So I had already done the research to know what they're worth. She found the research of the background of the potter. So the pottery company dates to the 19th century um and the v is from the founder but they continue to sign their pieces even though he's long gone they continue to sign his pieces with the v so it's a little bit harder to date they still are in production they are still making uh, pottery and they're still signing it this exact same way but they no longer make this piece i couldn't find the goblet uh so this is like a little water goblet or perfect for an air plant um this little water goblet. i couldn't find that but the design is fairly common it's a little goat either about to eat or in the process of eating a little grass that's down there. You've got the little horns on there. Uh, so this little goat pattern is, is around. And some people are calling it mid-century modern. A lot of people are saying it's from the 60s. I do not know the actual era. Uh, we couldn't find, I couldn't find this exact example. There's a smaller version that's an egg cup, found several of those. Um, but basically the pieces that sell now sell like just like a little soup bowl is selling for $79. Um, there it's a high end custom pottery maker. This is a very nicely designed piece. Uh, this was, again, it was headed for Etsy, but I decided, you know what? I'm going to offer it here. I got a good price on it. I will list it onto Etsy for much more, but I'm going to sell it here for 20. So $20 for the V, Piet, v Pinto, and Vietri is the region of uh, Italy uh, that it comes out of. So the Italian pottery hand-painted goat goblet air plant holder, 20 bucks. And you can get that by giving me number 53. 20 bucks, number 53 for the goat goblet. And I think I fell behind again. So let's see, so number 28 went to Susan Way. I remembered. Uh, so th congratulations, Susan, uh, for picking that up. And so that was those. So behind me, I still have the black Asian style tea tin for $6. And then the one that I didn't want to try and balance back there is the um, Advent wreath uh, from Abbey Press of children around the world for 15. So those are still available. And Victoria H wins the award for super fast payment. She's already paid her eBay bill. So congratulations. Thank you so much for doing that. And I will get that out. And if you buy anything else tonight, I'll of course combine it. And I think you did actually buy something else tonight. So I will of course combine them to save you on the shipping. So you've, you've already paid for the shipping through that. 
So you'll get the extra item for free, uh, shipping for free. All right. So I sold the tea pot, sold the tea, sold tea. Now I've got the tea cups. So we had the Melmac teacups. Now we got the porcelain teacups. So these were also in the booth. And I actually did pretty well selling coffee cups and teacups. And for some reason, these just didn't sell. Um, I had different versions of them. The low version sold, but these taller ones did not. And I actually don't know the difference. So this one is a little bit bigger than the one that I had. The other one was probably maybe half as tall. And it was more like a... It was more like the traditional curvature of a, of, a, of, a, of a teacup. This one has more the slant on it. So I don't know. I don't know if that means this is a coffee cup. I'm sure there's some differentiation because it was the same pattern. So, and I still have some of the low ones too. So it's like this one, it's just, it's a different style. So this is the Noritake. It's called the Oriental Pattern. I am not being politically incorrect. It is literally called the Oriental Pattern. Uh, colloquially, they refer to it as a bamboo pattern because it does have bamboo on it. And it's decorated on both the saucer and on both sides of the cup. So it's a, it's a decent size. It's a little bit bigger. I would have felt that this one would have sold faster than the short, smaller ones. But maybe for display, people like the smaller ones. Who knows? Um, but this is the... Okay, I've got some confusion going on. So hold on. No, I it. So the goats, I, had, I don't think I'd announce it yet. No. Okay, so the goats went to Danny at the Niche Lady. So thank you, Danny, for picking that up. So these uh, cups and saucers, I originally had in the booth for $5 each. I'm now selling them for $5 for the pair. So half price, you get both cups and both saucers for five bucks. So $5 for uh, both of the Noritake Oriental pattern, bamboo pattern, $5 for the pair by giving me number 70. $5, number 70 for the pair of teacups or coffee cups and saucers. Um, uh oh, see, I, I can't, this is why I have a problem following the chat because I see things out of context and TFA is asking if I'm being canceled. I think because of the word cancel. <laughs> oh yes, you know, I'll just, they're gonna be, they're gonna be picketing my, my uh, hideout, uh, the, the uh, Huckster hideout. All right, um, so related to that, um, not being called Oriental, not, I mean, and I also will just say we've got Noritake, they are Japanese, they're calling themselves Oriental, so whatever. <laughs> did that? Did I just make it worse? Um, anyway, this is another piece of Noritake. It's also got a bamboo pattern, but you can actually tell they're a different style. So this bamboo pattern is a lot more green in it. This one, the butter pat, that's actually like a black and a gray. So this is, I to me, I feel is a lot more modern looking uh, where the other bamboo is a little bit more traditional. So this is a butter pat, uh, three inches in diameter. It is marked Noritake, Japan. The mo model number or pattern number is 2133. The beautiful little piece. And this ends up being another multiple. So I am selling these. I have three of them. So I'm going to sell them individually and they're $4 a piece. So if you want one of the butter pats, be the first three people, be one of the first three people to enter into the chat, number 54. Number 54 for $4 gets you one of the butter pats. If you want more than one, just try and keep entering 54. And the first three people that the Huckster Helper sees uh, will get the three butter pats that I have in the um, 2133 Noritake pattern. All right. Um, the next piece is, again, a piece that was headed to Etsy, but I feel like I'm fairly happy um, at this point um, that I didn't mean to actually click on that. Um, I'm fairly happy at this point that I'm actually getting to a point where most of my stuff from my booth has been either already listed on Etsy or has been <laughs> given to Goodwill, is where a lot of it went, um, or sold here. Um, so I'm at the point where there are things that I was going to put on Etsy that I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to put it in the live sale. And this is another one of these. Um, I did the video on this. I picked this up at a place that uh, specializes in, oh, and Barb here is here from Winking Ellen Antiques and I've got the uh, butter pats, but unfortunately not, um, they're not technically restaurant wear. So sorry, Barb. Um, but thank you for joining the sale. This is a, um, wood carving that was part of a, a set that from the estate sale was all done by the same person, um, Joe Dillett. 
Did he not sign this one? He did not. Um, well, I'll have to take a picture of the other one because the other one was not, had a very nice uh, signature on it. For some reason, he didn't sign this one. I want to say this is later because it's much better done. It's very high, high relief. They took a, a solid piece, created the, you know, the cathedral, the Gothic top, and then a very thick uh, carving to relieve of the Madonna and child. And I'll just say, you know, I mean nothing more than this. I don't tend to carry religious items very often. Uh, so what I do, I really only do it when it gets, when it's something special. And I just really thought this had a really great look to it. So he did just, some of them were really, really naively done. And this one just has some great detail in her robes. You know, even the little, the feet, the toes sticking out, just some really nice depth that gives some nice shadows. So this really is an attractive piece that does have a place, you know, can be hung, but it's got a flat bottom. So it could actually be set up as well. Um, so we've got a hand carved Madonna and child all wood. I, I do not know my wood, so I don't know. Um, Katie, if you can tell just from, you know, images, um, I'm assuming it's like walnut would probably be too hard to carve. And I don't think it's dark enough to be walnut. Maybe it's oak, but I thought oak is kind of hard to carve too. So I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, it's a beautiful piece, Madonna and Child for $8. So $8 for the Madonna and Child wood carving. And you can get that by giving me number 80. $8, number 80 for the wooden Madonna and Child. And it looks like the all of the um, butter pats went. So two of them went to Karen Dondelinger. So thank you, Karen, for picking those up. And the third one went to Chantilly Chandra. So thank you, Chandra, for picking up the butter pat and picking up all three of those. All right. I've uh, got another multiple coming up. These I just thought were a lot of fun. And to be perfectly honest, when I first picked them up, I was going to keep them for myself. And then reality kind of kicked in and I just, I can't start another collection. So I could, but I won't. So what these are, it's, you know, it's a, it's a little set. So I'm going to try and show you what they are. They are cigar labels, but they're kind of special because they are all representing pieces of porcelain. So you get six cigar labels in the set and I have six sets available. So you, and the, so all the pieces of porcelain will be different. So I'm just showing you one set just so you get an idea of what's on here. So there's four of the Panter uh, labels. So that one has like a little rice cup or teacup on it. You've got a little um, porcelain horse. You've got a, I don't know, that's just a plate. I can't tell if that's supposed to, or maybe it's two plates on top of each other, maybe. I can't tell what that one's going to be. Uh, and then another bowl, rice bowl. Uh, so you've got, those are the four panter ones. And then you also get two TAF, T-A-F. And this is from the vases series. And so you get this, um, you know, with the swirl pattern on it. And then I guess it's a vase, but it looks more like a goblet because it's kind of footed. Um, so again, this is just one random set. So you're not getting these exact images, but these are the types of images that are on them. So you get a set of six, two of the squared off images. Those are the TAF and then four of the Panzer uh, Panther images, which are rounded. So that's what you get, total of six, and you get a set of six for $4. So you get a set of six, $4. Uh, um, and Katie said that, oh, Katie said it might have been olive or acacia wood. I've seen some of the Madonnas and Child done in olive wood, but they tend to come from Jerusalem. And this was a local guy from Ottawa, uh, Illinois. <laughs> so they, he may not have been that fancy, but maybe he could have been. Uh, it's the color of olive wood. I don't know what acacia wood looks like. So thanks for sharing that, Katie. Um, and wait. Okay. Then, so you get $4 for the set of six. So $4 for the set of six of the labels. And you get those by giving me number 20. So again, there are six sets available. So the first six people that enter the number 20 into the chat, the first six will get a set of the labels. All right. Um, all 
I've got uh, another piece of glass, sort of. It's kind of a combo effect. You got metal and glass. So these are a pair of glass and aluminum hurricane lamps. Or, well, I don't know if they still call them hurricane lamps. They've got the hurricane glass on them, but they're kind of the nightstick, um, night night candle uh, look because it's got the the one handle to hold it. So, you know, kind of the chamber stick, that's what I was coming up with. So you've got the aluminum base. Uh, it is marked Brilliant Tone is the company and it is the Wild Rose pattern. So it has a hammered aluminum on the base and then it's not repoussé because the pattern does not come from the other side. But then you also have kind of a, I guess, a molded the wild rose pattern into the base. And then on this, you have wheel cut designs uh, into the glass of grape uh, clusters. They're in absolutely perfect condition. There's no chips or cracks anywhere around the top. The metal is not bent, not no scratches. It's, you know, it probably could be polished up a little bit, but it's actually in pretty good, you know, pretty good finish. Um, just a cool pair, probably with that wheel cut, um, um, great pattern, maybe fifties, uh, maybe sixties. Uh, I'm not sure about the aluminum. I think most of the aluminum pieces were more done in the sixties. So I'm not hundred percent sure on the age, but beautiful pair. And you get the pair of them for 10 bucks. So $10 for the pair of, uh, chamber stick, um, with glass hurricane lamps. $10 by giving me number 35. $10 number 35 for the pair of hurricane lamps. Um, so let's see. So number 80, the Madonna and Child went to Diane Broderick. So thank you, Diane, for picking that up. And... Okay, so what's still available, okay, and I've got the names of the cigar, um, the cigar labels. Huckster Helper's furiously typing away, so she's trying to get caught up. Yeah. Um, and then the hurricane lamp went to Hazel L. So thank you, Hazel. I think that's the second thing that you've picked up tonight. So again, just make sure that you send me an email uh, letting me know. Maybe you didn't pick up something else. Regardless, I just need you to send me an email where you are because I don't think I've shipped to you before. So congratulations. Thank you so much for picking up the pair of, um, the pair of lamps. And it looks like uh, Sandy's got a question. But that's to Nate, so never mind. Um, got the Huckster helper in house, so Nate is actually not to be blamed this evening. It's all my all my daughter. So if anything's gone wrong, uh, just let us know. She is on the chat, and she will take care of it. Um, all right. Next item, I actually this was another item I had in my um, Instagram uh, promotions. This is just. I couldn't pass him up while I saw him, and you know you all want him. He is a piece of hand of hand carved. I'm assuming of African origin, but I have no idea because there's no marks, there's no stamps, there's nothing on here to indicate an artist or anybody that did this. It's just it's a very cool piece. It's very it's a decent size. He's not particularly heavy, so it wouldn't it won't be like super heavy. It'll fit in the shoebox size of box. And it's not particularly heavy, so it won't be a lot to ship, but he's about 14 inches tall. Um, he's smoking a pipe. He's got kind of a satchel around his uh, shoulder and then a really nifty looking machete. Um, so he's, he's, he's got some seriousness. Um, so he is just, he's got some colors painted into him. So you can see there's something painted into the satchel. His trousers are a red color. Um, he's kind of got an orangish color that I don't think is the net. That might actually be the natural wood now that I look at it because his face has actually been darkened. So I think maybe the, maybe his shirt is actually the natural color 
and then his arms where the arms uh the sleeves end we're going back to the darker it's been darkened again to make a darker skin color um so i he may be african he may be um caribbean i do not know i know no history of him the person i got him from had no history on him he was just kind of fun so it is just a cool wood carving of a dude smoking a pipe and he's 15 bucks so fifteen dollars for the smoking guy by giving me number 56. Fifteen dollars, number 56 for the smoking wood carving. All right. Fell behind. Okay, so Linda Punky is thinking that it's Jamaican, uh, so, which, okay, I, I could absolutely I believe that. Um, that I, like, I wasn't sure it was African, Caribbean. Like I do believe it's not North Aurora. Um, but I, again, couldn't, couldn't tell you. But if you've got one that came from Af from Jamaica, that's a good, a good combo uh, to make some connections. Um, yes, yeah, so I think that larger item, I want to say that larger item, is, I want to say it's a machete or a scythe but I don't think he's the Grim Reaper. So I, I think it's just designed, it is a knife because you can see how he's grip, gripping the handle, but I think it's like a harvesting knife of some sort. So like, I don't know what is version of different, I don't know anything other than uh, what else do you call a machete? Like what do you call one that's hunts, that cuts down wheat? Um, so I have no idea. All right, um, next one is another piece of wood. Actually, I think it's wood, maybe wood. Yeah, I think it's wood. Um, this also had been in my in my booth. This was actually being used as a riser. Sickle. There you go. That was it. Thank you, Patricia. Sickle. It's a sickle. Um, did would not have come up with that. I did grow up in a farming community, but I am not a farmer. So uh, thank you for sharing that, Patricia. Uh, this was in my booth, but it was actually being used as a riser to hold other things. And I think that's one of the main reasons it never sold is people didn't realize it was actually for sale. Uh, so that's my own fault. Um, and I, you know, I didn't care. I think I had it originally it was 10. I marked it down to eight I'm selling it here for five. Uh, it's in the shape of a book. It's got a kind of a cool crest on it and it happens to be war and peace is the label of the book. So I can do a little, like a little safe, a little security box. I don't even think it's all that old. Like I'm sure you could probably, these might even be modern. I have no idea. Just kind of had a really cool vintage look. It did look cool on the shelf that was holding other stuff. It's just at this point, I don't need it. So I'm passing it along. So it is a War and Peace storage book box and you can pick him up for five bucks. So $5 for the War and Peace book box. $5 by giving me number 49. $5.49 for the War and Peace box. Yes, yeah, so I've got all kinds of shapes and sizes of wood. I didn't even realize I was kind of developing a theme. It wasn't even intentional. Last theme I had, last week I ended up with a theme of pictures. Um, uh, let's see. And then, so the wood carving goes to Barb Lee. So thank you, Barb, for picking that up. And... Do you have a list of who got the um, cigar labels? Only Karen wants two and Blue Flamingo wants two. Okay, so we still have cigar labels left. Um, Karen, so three sets are gone. We still have three sets left. Four sets are gone. Did Lori want two? Karen wants two. Karen wants two. They both want two. Oh, they both want two. Yes. So Lori wants two. Yes. So when I said Lori wants two and you said Karen wants two, that was, that was answering they, my question. They both want two. <laughs> Feel the love. Uh, all right, so Lori and Lori got two, and Karen got two, so we have two left. Um, so if anyone still wants the porcelain themed cigar labels, those were number twenty for a, se a set of six goes for four dollars. And the wooden box goes to Halem um, for five dollars. So thank you, Halem, for picking that up. Uh, the next item also, this, was this in my booth? Yeah, I think it was in my booth. But I think I brought it out of my booth at one point because I found it open with all the pieces sitting on the floor. So some somebody's little child 
uh, found it and like the parent was completely ignoring them. Um, all the pieces were still in here, so I but I rescued it and brought it home. So it is a showdown poker set. So you can see it's a dice game. So you've got the little cup uh, and the set of dice, and then you're trying to roll for the different patterns of um, you know straight and all that kind of stuff. It's set up like the board almost looks like a uh, the board almost looks like um, a Scrabble board because there's like doubles and triples and things like that. Um, and amen, Katie. Amen. Um, so, and I'm saying that with my child within throwing distance of me. Um, so anyway, so it's actually still nicely boxed. Like it still has the timer. It still has the uh, cup. I think this was, I think this held the pad of paper because there's kind of like this weird cardboard thing with staples on it. So I think this might've been like a score pad or something. So that's, that's just been used. And then you've got the dice. And then like when you roll the dice, they fit into the little, you know, the little squares. So as you're trying to build, um, so it is showdown poker. Um, the box is in rough condition. The art's still in pretty good condition, but as you get around to some of the edges, you know, this has been retaped together. So, you know, just be aware the instructions are here because the instructions are inside the box. So it is kind of just a cool vintage game, um, but the box is in rougher condition and it's it will fit in a 14 by 14 box, but it's going to be a little bigger. So there's, there's going to be some shipping. Um, just keep that in mind. But I, I took that into consideration and just marked it at five bucks. So $5 for the Showdown Poker Vintage Dice Game, five bucks. You can get it by giving me number 52. Five dollars, number fifty-two for the showdown dice game. All right, um, I'm actually running out of items, so the last one. No, I've got two left. So I've got uh, this one. This one, I'll be perfectly honest. I'm surprised I still have it because this actually dates back to my first booth, and I just think it's cool. It is a vintage fondue pot, and I've never seen another one like it. It's pottery. It's got the little metal brace in it to hold the tea light. I don't know how well a tea light warms the pot, but it's got the full set, and it has the full set of the original skewers, which have little holes in the wooden uh, in the wooden base. There are whole pairs of holes on all four sides to hold the um, forks. So it's like a whole little built-in set. And if you're not interested in using it for the fondue, you really do just have a great, whether you make use this as a candy dish, you have a great piece of pottery. It's, it's got an incised mark from Japan. You know, you've got this these cool designs. It's that, I mean, like straight out of the 70s, you've got this like um, caramel colored, you know, clay background with a little bit of the brown speckle and then these dark brown little swirls. And you've got the original wooden, the original wooden lid. So whether you use it as a as an uh, air plant planter holder, or use it as a candy dish, or you put it all together and use it as the fondue pot, it's just a cool piece. It's cool that it's all still together, uh, and it's only ten bucks. It was fifteen in my booth, and I marked it down to ten. So ten dollars for the pottery fondue set. Uh, ten dollars by giving me number thirty-two. Ten dollars thirty-two. Uh, and Amy Gordon, I believe, um, usually th uh, this overstuffed house, it's all one word, this overstuffed house uh, on YouTube, they are, she usually has her sales at 11 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so she, so there's like about an hour when I finish that she'll go on. Um, so I believe she's having a sale, but if somebody says otherwise, let me know. Uh, Cause she canceled one a couple of weeks ago, but I don't, I don't remember seeing a cancellation. So she's probably got one later tonight. There might be others, but that's the only one that I know of um, off the top of my head. Um, all right. And so the game, the showdown poker game went to Lori at blue flamingo mercantile. And it looks like we had no takers on the fondue pot. So he will go back here. All right, and then the last item I've got is way over there. Oh, I didn't realize <laughs> oh, that was just part of our house. 
Yes, I always keep chamber pots on the kitchen counter. So I also had a video on this. So this is fairly large piece, admittedly, and fairly heavy. So take that into consideration as you're considering it. Um, but I'm trying to price it in a way that'll make it that still will make it attractive, even though you'll be paying for the shipping. Uh, this is, as I just announced, this is the a chamber pot. Um, so a chamber pot, if you don't know what a chamber pot is, chamber pot is used to uh, receive your bio waste, uh, typically sometimes in the middle of the night or just or in the winter when you don't want to have to go use the outhouse. If you don't have indoor plumbing, you have this sitting somewhere and uh, <coughs> fill her up. Um, I heard it is referred to uh, as a thunder mug, which I, I find both hilarious and disturbing at the same time, because you can imagine what kind of sound would come out of this. It's doing certain types of biodiversity. Um, it's in great condition. It has its original lid. You can tell by the handle has this kind of like aesthetic, this or this Asian style, um, bracket as a handle and the same shape is on the top. Now, because it got handled probably more often, the gold on the handle has worn away where the gold on the lid is actually still in place. So it's a fairly decent size. Usually when you come across them, I did a video while I was shopping one time, and this was the, I I'd only found ones without the, without the top. So you don't have the, the top. There is a line at the bottom that when you run your finger across it, it doesn't feel like anything on the inside, but there are also some lines on the back, on the outside. So they don't seem to go all the way through. These lines don't correspond with the line in the middle. And the same thing, this one, you can't feel them as you're feeling it. So it seems like they're under the glaze. So I can't tell you if they're structural, you know, or anything like that. So again, I tried to give this a good price for the age of this piece. You know, this is definitely over a hundred years old, probably getting into like the 1880s. Um, so just a great piece of history, whether you use it with the lid or not. I mean, this would make a fantastic planter, um, like a traditional planter. You can put a little, some rock in the bottom or something like that, there's no hole. Um, but you know, this in the right design or sitting on a, you know, a little table in your um, powder room or your master bath, you know, you don't have to announce what it is. It just looks cool. Uh, and yeah, Melody, a huge air plant. You know, that, that's, it's just screaming for an entire terrarium to live in there. So it's a, it's a great piece. Uh, again, just keep, keep in mind, it's gonna be a little bit heavy. So keep that in mind, but you're, I'm pricing it below what they're typically even, what they're selling for even on eBay. So if you're gonna buy one, you probably need it shipped. I'll do the best I can to keep shipping down, but it's 20 bucks. So $20 for the chamber pot, uh, 20 bucks. They're giving me number 98. $20.98 for the covered chamber pot. And that's everything I had. Um, no, it's not. I had one more piece. Why, how did I miss this? <laughs> They're sitting right here. Um, so this is my last multiple, and this is also my last piece. Uh, so these are fondue plates. I meant to have, I went to list them right after I did the fondue pot, but I forgot. So this is this um, kind of like you can see, it's like a, um, Pentag Pentagon, pentagram? No, that's something else. Um, the It's the divided dish that are typically considered fondue plates. Uh, what's nice about these is they are a little bit more rare because they have the incised mark in the back that says they are Zanner and it's in German. They are German uh, fondue plates. So they don't come up very often here on this side of the pond and they are, they were one of the earlier things I bought to resell, but they are kind of a specialty piece. So they were in my booth, they didn't sell, and I kept, I kept marking them down. I was trying to sell them as a complete set. So what I'm doing now is I'm selling them as a pair. So I have two pair. So this is my last multiple. I've got two pair of um, the, uh, two pair of the, of the fondue plates. Both, all of them will have the marks on them they were um, selling them as a pair for 10 bucks. So $5 a plate. So $10 for the pair. I have two pair available. So if you want more than one, just be really fast. Otherwise the first two people that get them, I don't think this is, needs to do anything to the fondue. These are just really cool, a very dark green and they're a decent weight. They're just, they're very well made. They're German. Um, they may not be funny, but they know how to make <laughs> their China. 
Um, so it's just, it's a really great stone. It's really more of a stoneware. Um, really nice piece. All in great condition, no chips, no cracks, all the glaze is in perfect condition, no crazing. So they're totally functional as a hors d'oeuvre plate, whatever you wanted to do. $10 for the pair, and I'm stalling because I lost my tag. Here it is. $10 for the pair of plates. Again, they're marked uh, Zahner, Z A H N E R, Reinfelden. Oh, I got a nod of approval. Okay. Rheinfelden. So it, they don't even say Germany. So I'm not exactly sure how old they are. Assuming since they're fondue plates, they're probably from the 60s. But if they're in the 60s, they'd be marked West Germany. So I'm not sure why they're not marked that way. Uh, so I don't know their age, but they're they're nice pieces. So $10 for the pair. Two pairs available. The first two people that give the number seven. Number seven, $10 for the pair of fondue plates. All right, so that was the last thing. So you've got the fondue plates are available. The fondue set is still available. So the fondue set was thirty number thirty two for ten dollars. Oh, and I'll just I'll sign off really quick. So if you're if you've been here for the whole sale, first of all, thank you so much. Thanks for sticking around. Really appreciate everybody joining me. Um, great to have my daughter back with me and, uh, basically, you know, breaking her back in with all these multiples. Nate is probably just laughing his way, you know, having the night off. Uh, but Nate will be back with us next week, uh, running, running the, uh, first, first to claim. Um, but thank you all for joining me. Uh, I will have another, uh, live sale next Wednesday, uh, next Thursday. They're always on Thursdays at 8 PM. I will also be doing videos typically on Sundays. I'll have some sort of a video on Sundays. Uh, also at 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, usually it's either a deep dive or it's a premiere video. Sometimes it's a live. Uh, I can announce my next um, deep dive. Hit where I'm not sure it'll be my next one, but I have scheduled another deep dive. It is for May 2nd, so it's in a month away. Uh, but that one will be on longer burger baskets. So I'm hoping there's something interesting there. Um, but there's, I thought longer burgers had like zero value, like to the point that I wouldn't even pick them up. And then I started paying attention to what they go for on eBay. And there are certain ones that have definite value. So we're going to have uh, Cindy from Mimi's Treasure Cottage join us. Uh, she says she can talk longer burger in her sleep. So she is going to educate us all on everything you need to know if you're out in the wild, if you come across one, if they're, if it's gonna have any value or not. So that's May 2nd. I'm still trying to pin down a couple others, um, but those are my videos. So thank you for joining me. Um, if you are, if you were late, uh, go ahead and stick around because I'm gonna just really quickly go over the handful of things that didn't sell. So um, 32, number 32 for $10 was the fondue set and it is the complete set including the tea light holder, the stand, and the four fondue forks. So those did not sell. The tea tin, which to be perfectly honest, I'm surprised did not sell. Uh, it's the little, it's the um, black ground with the red uh, design with the uh, couple. It is uh, an old Watkins uh, instant tea canister with a screw top ad addition. So it actually makes it airtight. So it actually can hold tea. Uh, that was number 93 and that was $6. And then the, um, did 56 sell? Yeah. All right, so Barb Lee got this. I'm just moving him out of the way. So Barb Lee got the carving. So again, thank you, Barb. Um, the advent wreath. This is the, the uh, Abbey Press Children Around the World Advent uh, Candle Wreath. That was number 86, and that was $15. So that's for the um, hope, joy, and peace of children around the world, Abbey Press. Uh, Karen Dondlinger just picked up something. The tea tin. Karen Dondlinger picked up the tea tin. So thank you very much, Karen, for picking that up. Um, did anyone buy, and somebody bought the chamber pot, but I didn't announce it. Chamber pot with Jenny X. Jenny X bought the chamber pot. So thank you, Jenny, uh, for picking that up. And then the teacups. The pair of teacups and saucers, $5 for the pair. Uh, that was number 70 for the Noritake uh, Oriental pattern. Um, teacups and the fondue plates evidently are still available. So a pair of the green German 
fondue plates, seven dollar or seven, number seven, ten dollars for the pair. So that was everything. Um, and then, if you uh, again, a, a shout out and congratulations to Vicky H. <coughs> Sorry uh, for picking up the auction item that I had on eBay. Can I grab that? Yes. Uh, and so if you're interested in picking up a hot, the next auction item is already live. That is this uh, green um, piece, uh, deco style, if not deco era. It has a, a studio mark on the bottom, so it might be more contemporary, but it's got this great ombre green glaze. It's kind of a little darker at the top, goes lighter, and then it goes darker again, and then goes lighter again. So there's just some really great optic stuff going on. It's three handle, beautiful piece. It is currently on the, my eBay um, store now, link in the chat or in the comments or through my link tree. And uh, that will end in the middle of the sale next week. So uh, good luck uh, to you if you are interested in picking that up. So again, thanks so much for everyone joining the evening. I've finished early. There was something going on about 1045. So I don't know if there was another sale or if um, if uh, Nancy from this Overstuff house is going to be starting early. Um, so, oh, so it was a different one. All right. So it looks like we had a couple last minute claims. Um, so Val, the... Val M is the fondue pot. Okay, so Val M got the fondue pot. And Jerry Ellsworth gets two of the green plates. Jerry Ellsworth gets... Number seven. There we go. Jerry Ellsworth. Great. Thank you, Jerry, for picking up uh, that pair. If you want the other pair, let me know. Uh, you get them both pairs because no one else uh, claimed those. Um, anyway, thank you so much. And yes, it is... I'm sorry. This is sexy, Christy. Mm -hmm. I have a boring life. And so this gets to qualify as sexy in my world. Um, but I like the shape. So that is uh, in the listing. You know what? I don't know what I'm not used to eBay. So who knows what words will get attraction in the eBay uh, algorithm. Uh, so again, thanks everyone for joining me. I've been rambling a little bit. I uh, definitely jump over to Nancy uh, 11 p.m. Eastern for this overstuffed house. Uh, tomorrow, I, I don't remember seeing the note from um, Danny, but I'm pretty sure her sales are during the day. Uh, so Danny from the Niche Lady, she, she'll have her sale tomorrow. Um, trying to think who, uh, uh, trying to think who else. Um, Stephanie was here uh, from Thrifting Adventures. She's on Tuesday evenings. Uh, Norma Jean Plus One, she's back from her vacation, and I don't know if she's got a set date, but definitely follow Norma Jean Plus One as well, uh, because she also does some fun live sales. Oh, I've gotten some great stuff from her uh, from her before. So um, check around, follow Mar um, Angela Marksberry and uh, Sandy and Otto uh, for different variations on the calendars, so you can keep track of everyone who's got sales. And thanks so much for joining mine. So I'll be back for my next sale next Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Same bat time, same bat channel. So thanks for your time. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. Have a good night. Bye-bye.